Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's our lad for Set Play Gaming. This is the EAFC 24 Colchester United career mode with Owen Coyle. That was a bit of a mouthful, that. Um, welcome back to the channel, guys. It's been a while and we finished the last career mode on FIFA 23 with Stevenage and AD Boothroyd, as well as West Brom. Um, welcome back. Uh, we're going to be starting this career mode. There's a little bit of anxiety about this simply because from my part uh, because as with all the EA games that are released within the first two weeks uh, there's always um, little problems little bugs little glitches and things that need to be fixed and I didn't really want to start it and then afterwards go oh well they just released an update and it fixes some of the problems but only on new saves and I was waiting and waiting and waiting just to see whether anything cropped up whether EA were going to make an announcement about fixing certain things and in the end i just decided you know what during my sim test i was able to get through a season yes there were a few annoying things which i'll get to but for the most part i was able to complete a season how that's going to play out when i actually play the games i'm not sure but that's kind of why we're jumping into it um so owen coyle let's talk about him <clears throat> very similar to our last story um if you're not familiar with the last career mode we did A.D. Boothroyd, he was managing in India in the Hero Super League and we took him from India and brought him back home to England to manage League 2 and to start with Stevenage. Now, Owen Coyle is in many ways very similar. There's almost like a almost like a shadow, a copy of, of, of what we've just done in the sense that this guy, he was born in Scotland, decided to um, represent Ireland because by his own admitting said... He didn't think he was good enough to play for Scotland national team, so fair play to him. Um, from a managerial perspective, I remember him being manager at Burnley, and that would have been, I'm going to guess, around 2008, 2009. A cursory glance at his managerial record on Wikipedia. Um, he's managed in Scotland with Falkirk and St Johnston, in England with Burnley, Bolton, Wigan, Blackburn and Queen's Park. Now, he also has been in uh, India, as I mentioned. This is where we've taken him from in the game. So he's managed both Chennaiin and Jamshedpur. I hope I pronounced those properly. I believe he's back with Chennaiin again. Um, that's who, if you start as Owen Coyle, um, his default team is Chennaiin. So I'm guessing that's where he starts in 2023. Um, we've brought him back to manage Colchester and Owen Coyle liked to play a wing-based system. Um, but before we get to the um, team strategy, we're going to be doing the objectives. Let's have a look at the objectives first. Now, if you're new around here and you like the idea of a longer play career mode, that's what I do, uh, then certainly um, consider smashing the like button, leave me a comment, and of course, consider subscribing to continue my work on the channel. We'll start with the youth development, the short-term objective, assign at least three players younger than 20 years old, with potential greater than the average overall rating of players currently in the same position. When I did a sim test, um, I didn't realise at the time, but when I did a sim test, some of the players that I promoted from the academy counted towards that, because they were pretty good players. So we're not going to sort of like go bullet for a gun for that just yet. But I think that's a doable objective. Similar as well to sign three players in your youth academy assigned to the defender position. That was fairly easy to do within the first two or three months. Um, I think the priority there, because he is Scottish, but he represents Ireland, we should probably focus our scouts on those two countries and see who we can bring through. It could be interesting. The financial high priority is keep player salary growth under 5%. Now... As of right now, to start this career mode, we won't be signing any players, so I don't see that as being an issue. We do have some players that are on short-term contracts, just 12 months. Some of them will be letting go, some of them we will be re-signing, but I don't see them cutting into that percentage. If they do, it's not going to go 5%, I'm pretty sure of it. Um, so I think that's a doable objective. Keeping that in mind, our short-term domestic success is a low priority. Finish mid-table and reach the round of 16 stage in the FA Cup. That's quite laughable considering how low down we are on the league structure within FIFA 
we're fourth tier and we're being asked to reach the round of 16 in the FA Cup. This doesn't seem to change regardless of who you pick. It's pretty unrealistic. And so for that reason, I'm probably just going to... I'll play it. I'll play the, the FA Cup match and I'll try and put out my strongest side. But again, I'm not going to be too disappointed if we go out at the first round. And to be honest, it's a low objective and, and they shouldn't be too bothered about it either. Uh, continental success, nothing there. And brand exposure, get a streak of three wins in away matches this season. It's very low priority. Again, it's not something that I'm really going to be that focused on. I'm really just going to be looking at the youth development and the financial high and getting through the games and seeing what we can do with the team that we've got. Um, the mid-table thing, again, on sim test, I managed to get mid-table and it didn't really... It didn't really seem to alter my managerial rating all that much. So I'd be interested to see kind of what happens if we cut under that. So let's say we finish 20th or say 19th and they don't consider it to be a good enough position. Whether or not that affects my managerial rating and has a knock on effect, I don't know. But it, it's a low priority, so I wouldn't have thought that. So looking at the... Um, Team strategy. So one of the issues that has plagued the career mode at the minute is, and this hasn't been fixed to my knowledge, you basically select a tactical vision. And then once you've selected a tactical vision, you then hire coaches that go into these four categories. You can see here, <clears throat> we've actually got a scout hired. Uh, so if I just uh, go on here, his name is Stein Ajan. Um, he has three stars on attack, four on midfield, four on defence, and four in goal. He's just under 4,000 um, weekly wage. And all tactical knowledge tells us that he is a novice at wing play. He is an expert at standard. And then counter-attack is novice, and Gagan pressing is novice. You can have an idea there if you've not got the game. You can have an idea there of the tactical visions that you can select um, so what I was going to tell you was, if you try and fire a, a coach, it basically crashes the entire game. You can't do anything. None of the buttons work. You have to completely re reload your console, or restart, reboot your console. Um, so I don't know whether that's something they're going to be working on. You can hire new coaches. You just can't fire old ones. Um, so with that in mind, I'm just going to show you just real quick. If I go on to hire coach for the attack and then change this to the best. You can see here, there's an expert level wing play, Lily Vaness, and she's both good in attacking and midfield. Um, now, let's say, for example, she wasn't there. Let's say I went with somebody like Daniel Ryan, who is three star in attack, three star in midfield, three star in defence, and three star in goalkeeper. So he can go in any. He's versatile. He can he can do anything, and he's also a novice in wing. Now he's not as good as Lily, but let's just say in the second season I found another coach and I wanted to replace Daniel Ryan. I can't do that at, at current stage. Um, so. I'm not sure yet whether I should be hiring scouts based on their star rating and just plunking them in the best position and then hoping they learn the tactical tactical strategy that I've set up or whether I should wait until the list repopulates and then just hire a five star who's already an expert, if that makes sense. Um, I don't have any problems with hiring Lily Vaness in midfield or attack because they're already at five star skills and they're already an expert anyway. But at 9,000 is pretty steep. Um, maybe we should wait and see whether somebody else comes up. You can also change the searches here as well. So the tactical vision now is organized to wing play. You can see Will Nichols is three star in attack, two star in midfield. Uh, Daniel Ryan, who we just mentioned, and there's a couple of novices here, both Max Dobson and Ross Harkin. Even though they are novices in wing play, they do have three-star rating on goalkeeper skills. <clears throat> and then you've also got Zachary Arnold. He's actually accomplished, so silver level, but his ratings are horrible. Um, so, you know, again, it, it's like, do you do you hire the best that you've got available to you now, and then just go with it 
you know, like, the main thing is with these, is from what I can see, is if you have them all ticked off, um, it improves your um, players quicker. Um, let's see if we can go back to that screen. Um, coach management. Um, so, goalkeeping, you can see here, because we have a scout. So, these are the listed goalkeepers at the club. This includes the academy. Um, so, it says here that Owen Goodman originally was 33 weeks it's now 20 weeks so it greatly reduces that's 13 weeks difference that's that's pretty pretty substantial smith has gone from 32 to 19 weeks hassler bauman and saeed who i'm guessing are academy i've not been in there yet i'm guessing their academy um there's a 10 week difference with those so you can see that you know having these coaches is going to be beneficial but again if you can't fire them at a later date then you know maybe you're better off just leaving the position open until you find one that you're going to be happy with the reason why i signed this guy is because he's four star and i think that's very good um even though he's a novice in wing play um i believe at the end of the season he will become you know, accomplished or at least maybe even expert by the time he's learned it. If I just leave him on there, um, I think he'll learn the position and he'll get better. And you can do that with each position. You can just hire novice positions and then they'll get better. Whether their stars improve, I'm not sure. And again, that's that's the other thing. I might wait and just sign three star, three star, three star when the list repopulates and then and then just let them learn the, the, the tactic. I think that'll be the best thing considering how much um development time is reduced with just a novice guy i think that that might be the best thing right so um coach management we've already discussed that let's go to the squad now i did mention in the objectives based on the financial restriction of keeping salary growth under five percent we will not be signing anyone and the reason for that is because we've got five players in on loan already uh this is a default setup as well it's not players that i've signed it's just who who they signed in real life so they're here for 12 months we'll start with owen goodman in goal he's 61 rated he's only 19 on loan to us from crystal palace and this guy is an important squad role Another guy we've got is Zach Mitchell, on loan to us from Charlton Athletic. Now, he is a sporadic role, so we're not under that much pressure to play him, but he is going to see some games. 56 rated at 18, can play in defensive midfield and centre-back. Nico Lawrence, centre-back central defensive midfield, on loan to us from Southampton. 60 rated, but an important squad role. Again, we'll get to that in a second. Mauro Bandera is a central midfielder, right wing back, on loan to us from Arsenal, 58 rated. He is on rotation, so this is somebody that we should be able to keep happy. And then Joe Taylor, on loan to us from Luton Town, is a 57 rated striker who's 20 years old. Um, a rotation level contract, we should be able to keep him happy. Now, the players that we need to focus on regardless of what formation we play and this is really really important are the ones that have crucial and that is because we want them to stay happy we want them to always be involved um and there are you know obviously being on a crucial squad role it means that we can't really rotate them all that much maybe once or twice we can probably think about dropping them for a game if they're really tired but for the most part they're going to play a, a big hand in the games they should be by the end of the season between 40 45 maybe in 45 to 50 appearances including the cup they should be playing a lot of games this season you know barring injury so connor hall center back is the captain 64 rated a crucial squad role mandela egbo right wing back right back he's 25 in his prime 65 overall he's on a crucial role awara edwards left mid right mid he is 22, 64 rated. He's on a crucial contract. Cameron McGeehan from Northern Ireland is 66 rated. Central midfielder, not bad at all, considering we're a mid-table League 2 side. 66 rated. He's on a crucial contract. 
And of course, Noah Chilvers, central attacking midfielder, is 22, 64 rated. This guy, I think, has the potential to be the best player at the club. I haven't checked so FIFA, but I'm just guessing by, you know, my knowledge of League 2, my knowledge of these players, I think he's probably the highest rated, if not the second highest rated in terms of potential on how good he can be. Um, so those players, those those ones I've just mentioned, need to see a lot of game time. Um, what have I missed? All right, let's have a look at the important players. So Goodman, we mentioned. Now the left back situation, we have uh, a little bit of an issue here early on. Elisi Andolo can play central mid, but I prefer him to play left wing back. He is 62 overall in his prime at 25. Going to see a lot of games. But Alamin Kazim is also a left back, 21. He is 60 rated, so two points below him. And a good number of years difference. He's also on an important contract. So it might be that we have to just basically platoon these guys, meaning it's a 50-50 split. One game on, one game off. I did notice during the sim test that Alamin Kazim complained a lot about missing games and that, you know, it's important for him to play games. So there is an issue there. Uh, with that now there might be times where both of them are fit and Ian Dolo could probably play in central midfield so I can play Kazim left back which means both of them play um, but in the main I want to try and start Ian Dolo at left back and then have Kazim come on in a rotation basis and hopefully if I end up renewing this guy's contract because he, he does expire in 12 months that I can try and reduce him down to a rotation level because that's probably where he should be at then you've got Tom Dallison, 62, Kelleher, 61, um, Greenidge, rotation, 57. And we've just mentioned these guys that are on loan. So one of the things that we were looking at, we should look at, is the formation that we're going to play. Um, just go through these guys first real quick. Uh, Marley Marshall Miranda, 58 overall. He is a central midfield, central defensive midfielder. Uh, Fevre is a rotation. He's a midfielder, a wide midfielder, but also a wing back as well. He's very good physically, this guy. All the physics is just mental and technical development that he needs. Um, Arthur Reed, central midfielder, uh, central defensive midfielder. Again, this is guy should be probably on in a rotation based contract, given how good the midfield is. Jay Mingi, I really like the look of this guy simply because he's very good all round. Look at those yellows and, and greens. Um, not as good technically, but still some very good stats there for a guy that's only 22. It's going to be interesting to see how he develops this year. Matt J. Now, I did say that if this guy, if we didn't have Noah Chilvers, this guy would easily be a first choice uh, central attacking midfielder. I'm a big fan of this guy. He is going to see, even though he's on an important contract and he is 27 and not as good as um, Chilvers, I am going to be bringing this guy in uh, late in the game, you know, when there's tired legs and stuff. Um, 86 stamina, so he can run all day. 82 sprint speed, 91 balance and 92 agility for a League 2 player. That is ridiculous. Um, big, big fan of Matt J. Um... These two guys most likely will end up being panned out on loan simply because they, even though they're sporadic, um, the issue I have with them is just I don't know where they're going to fit in, how they're going to get games. Regardless of what formation I played in the sim test, they didn't play a lot and it just made more sense to loan them out. Newby, even though he's an important player, um, again, because of the formation we're playing, might see some game time as a rotation winger or attacking mid. Up front, as I mentioned, John Akind, he is declining already. We should be able to get that contract down to sporadic. Um, Hopper, he's going to see a lot of game time, and so is Taylor early on, even though he's a rotation. And of course, the big one is Samson Tovide. Uh, this guy, I really like the look of. Um, look at those physicals. There's not a single yellow there on his on his physical. It's just all green and just so impressive. 83 aggression. This guy looks really, really good. Um, six foot two, uh, 171 pounds. Uh, this guy looks uh, like he's going to be a, a good deal for us. Ionvian, I think we're going to send out on loan. 
It seems like the most logical thing to do. And then once a second day, if he gets to the point where he gets an offer to leave with him being on a 12-month contract, if he signs a, a, a deal to go somewhere else, then we can bring Guy Onvian in. He's six foot three, 180 pounds, already got pretty good strength. It's just going to be his mental and technical that needs work when he comes back. And of course, once the season finishes, Joe Taylor won't be around, so we will need an extra striker anyway. The team pretty much takes care of itself. Let's jump in now to the team management. I wanted to go through a couple of things. In real life, um, they're managed by Ben Garner, and he prefers to play 3-4-1-2 a lot of the time. And it, They have used other formations, but this seems to be his go-to. Um, now, the other day when I, I checked them out, they had Mandela Regbo as a right-sided centre-back, obviously because of his pace and physicality. Dallison and Hall are in there. Uh, they've used Lawrence, they've used Mitchell. Um, so there's a number of combinations, but it usually involves either a back five or this formation where there's still three centre-backs. Primarily, that seems to be the way that they like to play. Um, and then you've got McGeehan and Minge, Chilvers in behind two strikers. Now, because we are Owen Coyle, and because we've got so many players in... I think the more favourable formations are going to be 5-2-1-2 and then 5-2-2-1. And the reason being for that is 5-2-1-2 allows me to play Chilvers in between, in behind both strikers. Um, and it still maintains the idea of using five at the back because we've got so many players. Um, and that's why I like to use the 5-2-1-2. I like the idea of being able to have Yandolo or Egbo send crosses early from the wide positions once they overlap and then have somebody like Torvide or Hopper to knock it down as a target man to Chilvers, you know, depending on which player is knocking it down will depend on who's going to get the, the scoring chance. Um, the other thing as well is with this is the reason why I like Torvide on the right, and this is something I've done during kickoff mode, is as I mentioned, his strength is very good. Um, six foot two, 172 pounds. Plenty of work to develop him with. But when the ball comes over, when the cross comes over from, say, for example, from the right, so when Egbo crosses it, if he's crossing it to the back post and Hopper can knock it down, you've got Chilvers and Tolvide. Now, Tolvide is actually left-footed, using his strength. Sometimes Mingi or McGeehan will go forward, provide a pass to Chilvers, he'll knock it into Tolvide, and he's got the strength on his left to hold off with player, and then he's already on his favourite foot. Sometimes I've had him on the left as well, so if McGeehan or Chilvers plays a ball through, it's in behind the defence. He's got the pace, 84 acceleration, 81 sprint speed, he's no slouch, um, and then he's already on his left foot, bang, bottom corner. So there's a number of different roles that I see Torvide playing. Similar to, this is going to sound kind of weird, but Rashford operates on the left, and he cuts in on his right. So what I mean is, is Tovide could play as a right striker, but just a little bit wide here as a like kind of like a wide target man, if that makes sense. Not an out and out winger like Rashford, but kind of you know where you cut inside on your favourite foot, but on from the right side. I think that might be a good position for him to develop. Um, and the only other, I guess, the only other right sided striker there. Um, See if I get this right. So Taylor here in rotation, if you put Taylor there, you can have Taylor on the right. So when the ball gets knocked down, he's like the poacher, right? And then Tovide then becomes more like the target man. Now, if Tovide's too tired, you can put Hopper there. And you can also put Akinda there, you know. Might be early on that we give Akinda some games while he's still got that physicality. 92 strength. Um, he can't move, he's not all that mobile, but 192 pounds at 6 foot 2. Uh, during playtest, this guy was was phenomenal for us. Um, I do see Akindi more as a, a late, you know, 20, 15 minutes to go, bring him on and see whether he can, you know, kind of like a battering ram. Uh, I see him as that kind of player. Uh, so I am going to favour probably Tovide and um, Tom Hopper with Taylor as a combination, more likely than not. Um, I think that pretty much covers that. 
uh, we do need to discuss Awara Edwards. Um, so let's go back to 5-2-2-1. This is a formation that was suggested to me by Tom. Um, and again, the reason being is that Awara Edwards is a crucial player and he is only 22. He doesn't play any other position other than the wide position. Now with this formation, it allows us to have uh, two central attacking midfielders backing up the striker. Now they're in that sort of like half space where... They're not technically wingers, but they're also not fully central attacking midfielders, even though it says that. They're more like left and right cam. Um, and what we can do here is it we still allows the left wing back and the right wing back to come forward on the overlap. Now, if Childers cuts inside, um, he has got a four-star weak foot. It would be beneficial for that player there on the right to actually be a left-footed player. I don't think we have any attacking mids that are left-footed. Uh, Thomas is right. Uh, Jaden February could probably play there, but again, doesn't really do that in real life. Um, Newby again, a five-star weak foot, but he can play Cam and he's a right mid. So Newby probably, um, let's switch that round. Newby there. So Newby's on the bench. Um, there's a number of different multiple roles that we can do here. Um, as you can see, um, I do like Chilvers to play in behind both strikers and for him to be more central. So here maybe we could ask him to... Will it let me ask him to cut inside, support and cut defensive support? Uh, free roam. Maybe put him on free roam. Have him cut inside and when he does, you've got a Yandolo on the overlap. Um, so that's something that I've been sort of playing around with. Um, and again, this is... Uh, going to be something that we're going to test. We're going to use the team management, um, depending on obviously who we're playing, whether we're home or away. There's going to be a, a number of different formations, but for the most part, it's five two two one or five two one two. Early on, if we have the upper hand, if we have like an extra man in the game, I might change it to three four one two just to push players up and try and push home the advantage. That could be a formation that we could utilise. Again, it's still using wide players. Um, and this is Owen Coyle's preferred formation in real life, four two three one. That might be something that we move to in Season 2. Right, so we're just going to go now to the calendar real quick. We have a pre-season invite a week from now. I'm going to go off camera and then we'll come back and see what we've got in pre-season. Okay, so we've managed to get ourselves to the end of the week on Friday. And we have a invitation here for the International Cup. Let's have a look. So the pre-season tournament invite. For the most part, a lot of these games tend to be a bit of a sweat fest. Um, and really, it's just going to be a chance for us to try out the formations that I mentioned in team management. So we've got the European Shield, the European International Cup and the Champions Trophy. I don't know about picking the Champions Trophy simply because we haven't really been crowned as champions or anything. I know that doesn't really mean a whole lot. Um, it looks like it's taking place in Spain. There's three Spanish teams there, although there is three Scottish teams as well, and two English. The European International Cup has got Lincoln, Bristol Rovers, Leighton Orient. Uh, we're going to be playing those guys, English teams, in our regular season. What's this one? Not a whole lot of choice there. Uh, Volendam, Dundee, Cheltenham, Almere, PEC, Swallow. Cambridge and Port Vale. Hmm. It's whether we want to play in Germany or whether we want to play in Holland. Um, there's only 20 grand difference anyway. This one says three and a half stars difficulty. So I think we'll go for the European Shield and just go for 600k. Um, we'll play Dundee, whoever it is we've got in this in this one. We'll go for that one. Right, so uh, Volendam next week and Almer City and PEC Swallow. So we're going to be playing all the Dutch sides in that. Um, I'm happy with that. Those are the teams that we're going to be playing. Uh, Ion uh, Vian has received an offer to go to Mansfield Town with an option to buy. Of course, we don't want to sell him. 
So we're going to delegate this as a loan only on a one-year basis. And hopefully he agrees and goes to Mansfield for the season. We do have... Um, are we just going to delete international management? We don't need that right now. Here we go. Mansfield have accepted the loan. A one year loan. We'll just accept that. That's good. Um, these are scout reports on players they've been looking at. We don't need that. Don't need that anymore. Um, we'll look at those again in another little bit. <clears throat> and here we go. We are at pre season. When we come back in episode two, we will be doing these pre three preseason games and looking at the formations. And then in episode three, we'll be going into the League Two campaign. Thank you so much for joining me today on the channel. I hope you enjoyed this first video. And hopefully we can pick up some um, points and stuff and get some experience and try out some new new players in the preseason if you did go on to enjoy this video please do smash a like and continue supporting me thank you very much for watching i'll see you guys soon